What's up? I haven't done a Gara flip through in a while, so I reckon I need to do one now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I haven't been reading Gara too much as of late. Well, I haven't been reading much in general as of late, uh, but this one was the most recent issue that I've finished. So this is the 1973 February issue of Gara with a cover by uh, Shinichi Abe. Uh, a Gekiga author, and this is the 114th issue in Gara in general. And this here is the back with an advert uh, for Hayashi Seiichi's collection of works. So, um, I'm currently on the, the reading journey of going through all of my 1973 Gara issues. So, I have the full set, and so I'm currently on the second uh, issue in that year so far. But let's just get started with it because quite a couple of interesting things in this. Number one, I seem to have gotten a copy that had like a printing error, which is pretty cool. And you see here that it hasn't been cut properly. Um, but there are a couple of different uh, things in here that I want to talk about in the first couple of pages because it does feature some uh, color illustrations by three different people. And who are the three people? Oh, I don't think I've, yes, I do have them down. Uh, sorry, I just have some notes next to me just because I'm going through every single story. So to start off with, we have color illustrations by Sasaki Maki, Katayama Ken, and Ase Akasegawa Genpei. And they are, well, the title of it is called Kyokai Iroha Karuta. And what I searched up is it sort of means like dis distorted Iroha Karuta. And Iroha Karuta are Japanese playing cards that have different like hiragana on them, like yo, me, ri, wa, uh, etc., etc. And I feel like, I believe they're like, um, it's like different, uh, I don't know, sentences, play on words, whatever. Uh, but this first one here, or these first ones, are by Sasaki Maki. Very detailed. But I believe like the whatever hiragana is on the uh, card, you have a sentence that starts off with it. So sa, like san, ma, make, stuff like that. So I'll show you in more detail. This is very detailed for Sasaki. That's really cool. And then we've got two by Katayama Ken, who I've never really heard of before. Also very detailed. And some very weird imagery. And then last but not least is um, some illustrations from Akasegawa Genpei. Very interesting, very interesting set of illustrations. Uh, this is also by Akasegawa as well. But yeah, it seems that I've done like a little, you know, I've flicked through my 1973 Gara issues and all the color pages look really great. Um, but yeah, so to start off with, our very first story is called Love by Shinichi Abe. And it is a part of the um, Tankobon, also by Abe, called That Miyoko Asagaya Feeling. So... I'll just show you real quick. So it's a collection of, I haven't read it yet, but I believe they're all, I'm not sure if they're all connected, but um, a collection of stories that are, I think, bi autobiographical in a way. It's about Abe and his girlfriend, and I guess some of the experiences they've had. From what I know, I do believe it is somewhat autobiographical but Abe is known for you know his Gekiga stuff I love his style but sometimes his his works can be a little bit hard to understand that's fine uh, because love the first chapter here is a part of that collection and it seems like from what I could understand um, it's a short that follows Miyoko as she goes back into the countryside to see family is what I believe, because um, this Gara issue, the stories in here were a little bit hard to understand. 
for me at least, a bit more cryptic. Um, but we sort of started the story with like a, a weird sort of setting. This mangaka who might be Abe himself, I'm not too entirely sure, talking with a friend. And this one shot is, uh, it does uh, span over 30 pages or so, so it's a long one. But here they are just smoking, I believe that's Miyoko and Abe together. Just talking about life, him being a mangaka, drinking, there's a lot of like sexual scenes as well. This is her back in the countryside. Visiting family, I believe. And in the bathhouse. And yep, here you go. This is the uh, panel that is the cover of the Gari issue. But in red and blue. That's pretty cool. This is Abe drinking. But I really love this, like, this especially, like, the background. It's simple, but it showcases a lot of emotion. He's running, screaming, that sort of thing. And it ends there. So it's a very, to me, kind of hard to understand. I don't know really exactly what's going on, but, you know, I do know that the foundation of it and the rest of the Miyoko Asagaya Tangobon is related to Abe's life, his experiences, and also his uh, life with his girlfriend as well, Miyoko. So the next um, story here is by Kawasaki Yukio, um, which is titled Roido Megane no Otoko. I'm not sure what that means. I didn't actually read this because I'm going to be honest, uh, I'm not really into you uh kawasaki's manga so you see a lot of this recurring character the one with like the eye patch thing um but yeah i've tried out his stuff it's not my thing it's a little bit different to my taste so i did do it like you know i still flip through it because gara of course but i didn't actually read any of it um so i'm not sure what the stories are about but it does seem like a more adventurous type of story but adventurous as in like main character goes out fights people that sort of thing but personally i just wasn't that interested so um yeah but if you are you know feel free to take a look at it because i am flicking through every single page of any gara issue that i um uh, show on the channel Okay, so the next story we have here is uh, Purple Legend, uh, number five, I believe. So there's a lot of different parts to the Purple Legend story. This is by Mazuzo Furukawa, and uh, I have seen a couple of other different chapters of Purple Legend in other Gara issues, but this one seems to be a, a separate one, um, and it follows a boy uh, who lives in a rural village. And he's sort of in a relationship with a girl. Um, and sometimes they go away to have fun with each other. So here they are on a boat. These two over here, that's the boy, that's the girl. And they sort of get interrupted a bit. Like, you know, I'll be careful either way. Um, but they sort of get uh, found out by another, another boy in the village and essentially they get dubbed on, like they get told, uh, someone tells on them. And it is in like, because someone has told on them, the mother of the girl tells her to, you know, stop, focus on the studies, her teacher also tells her the same thing. And so the boy is left out feeling, you know, like confused. Where is she? She should have been here. 
that sort of thing. And in class, she sort of openly rejects him and he slaps her, which is a bit harsh. Um, and yeah, it's a, there's a lot of drama. She cries, he runs away. He goes by himself to the, like near the river, something like that. And there's this sort of song that plays as he sits there. So I believe this is just the first part of one of the stories. I'm not too entirely sure on what Pebble Legend is, whether it's a full series, whether there are a couple of one shots, but that was the story at least in this chapter. But yeah, Mazuzo Furukawa, I love his art style a lot. Uh, it's very expressive. But yeah, I do have to find out what exactly Purple Legend is. But yeah, there you go. That, that was that story there. Um, next one, you'll probably recognize this art style. This is um, Kaidan Neko, which means like a ghost cat, by Hanawa Kazuichi. Very well known Eroguro mangaka. This one though, I'm not too entirely sure what the the ending of the story means. But I'll explain what it, what happens first. We have this sort of nun here who lives in like near on top of a mountain, something like that. And she's very sick at the moment. She has no one to help her except for this cat who keeps her company. And uh, she has this sort of delirium moment or like because she's having a fever and she's sick, I think she starts seeing things. The cat here, and she notices that the cat's like jumps up the stairs or something like that. So she's she's saying like, "Oh, kaidan, kaidan, you know, is a ghost, a ghost, something like that." And it just ends there. So I'm not exactly sure what it means. Was the cat just not real, and then she realized it was a ghost, or? Is she like, uh, I, I'm not too entirely sure, to be honest, because it just says here, like, it says here, like, oh, at that time, that cat, and then it goes to this cat doing something, jumping back on the stairs, and she just exclaims, oh, it's a, a ghost, a ghost. So, yeah, a little bit hard to understand, not entirely sure what it means, but um, that's just how I could explain it you so whatever interpretations you have <laughs> it's up to you but that's the best that I can explain uh, for that story by Hanawa Kazuichi. And then you got uh, the usual Susumu Katsumata works which I don't read too much because I'm not into his one no not one shot his uh, Yonkoma works four panel works too much so I usually just like flick through a little bit um, this one's a little bit of a longer work. Saron. Focused on birds, cranes. You got advertisements. And now we move on to the next story uh, that is titled Dr. Jekyll and the Face of Truth by Tani Hiroji. So it's a story that is based off the concept of, um, I mean, like it references, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, but what happens is we have this doctor here who, who visits um, this boy's family during the night. And here he is over here. And the boy starts to get sort of suspicious and he thinks, oh, what if he's like a, you know, he turns into a monster at night. What if he's like Dr. Jekyll or was it Mr. Hyde? I, I read the story. I forgot which one was which, but the one who turns into a monster. Um, and he starts to imagine, like, you know, he's getting sleepy. He sees things. He gets even more confused a bit. So later on, once the doctor leaves, he figures out, oh, you know, might as well find out for myself. Let's go and stalk this guy. Loses track for, of him for a little bit. But the monster, which is presumably the doctor, comes at him with a monstrous face and chases him down with a knife and his parents hear him screaming and they're like what's going on well turns out he was just sleeping and screaming in his sleep or just talking in his sleep and his parents are like oh you're good you're good that sort of thing 
But at the end, we see the doctor walking away. We don't know his face, what his face looks like, just laughing. So was it really a dream or was it uh, reality? Who knows? Yeah, that was a short one by Tani Hiroji. Pretty good. So we'll move on. Next story but, uh, is called Kukari Topia. Mm, not too entirely sure what that means. But this is by Iwamoto Kyusoku. And it's a little bit of a whimsical piece. It reminds me, his art style reminds me of um, Ryuzan Aki a little bit. It's very like simple. But essentially a man is stranded on a log in the middle of the ocean. And, you know, does some weird stuff and finds himself uh, on top of a whale. He meets another person on a log and starts fishing because he's hungry. And yeah, it's just a lot of random weird things happening. There's another person that's watching him here. He's still annoying, annoying the, the whale a bit. Gets pulled out and uh, the whale just, um, he switches places and the man who saves him is dragged underneath by the whale. And well, for some reason, it turns out there's two whales and they just guide him out. It's a very weird and uh, very random stuff, but yeah, that was uh, Bukari Topia by Iwamoto Kyusoku. Okay, next one. Left, we've got a story called Aichan by Ganeke Omu. This one was a really hard story to understand. I'm not sure I like could uh, make out the message of the story or the plots really, but we follow Ai, who's this girl here, who seems to um, be living with like a boyfriend at home. And it's mainly centered on her life and her relationship with her boyfriend, I believe. I don't know. It was just hard translating this this um story. So I got to be honest. I can't really say what this is fully about um, exactly. But because they keep using a specific term, wondo, and it's in katakana. I don't know what bond means in this context. Like I searched it up it on like a dictionary. It could it could mean glue or something like that. Like does it mean like they're smoking something? Um because it seems to be that like I don't know, I believe they were doing some form of drug. Something like that. Yeah, this they're doing something. So uh, I'm not too entirely sure. But it's focused on them too. And I guess their experiences living together. Ai Chan has been through a bit of hardship with her family. So, yeah, that's all I can really say about this story, unfortunately. But the art's great. Facial expressions are uh, very fitting for the atmosphere. But yeah, it does seem to be a, a story that is centered on um, substance use and the relationship between two people. That sort of thing. Okay, so for the next one, we've got uh, Giriyaku Funguri, uh, which is the eleventh chapter. It's a it's a continuing series by uh, Fujisawa Mitsuo. That's I'm not following too much because yeah, he's another one of the manga color which I am not too into. Well, I'm not into this continuing series. I like some of his other one shots. Uh, but this is the 11th chapter anyway, so uh, he does, I like to describe his character de character designs as being like, it's a lot of like cavemen people doing weird psychedelic stuff. Um, not exactly my thing, but if it's yours, then feel free to enjoy this page by page. Yeah, but this one is an ongoing series. Well was an ongoing series. There's like a couple of chapters uh, every couple of issues or so. so. That was Fujisawa Mitsuo. Next one we have, what do we have next? Okay, this one is called Aru Otoko, 
which means a man, by uh, Kusunoki Shohei. It's a short one too, but we open up with a like a theatre production. Everyone's in the crowd watching this person um, perform. And, you know, they're, they're going crazy for it. And some of the men in the crowd notice, oh, there's a, a woman uh, up there. I think it might be like a famous woman or a pretty woman or something like that. They're saying, oh, where, where? Where's that woman? The actor notices that woman as well. Uh, but this man here, he gets the urge to sneeze, and he does sneeze, but it seems like he sneezed on that woman. So he's shocked and scared, and um, oh, he just gets hanged. A uh, <laughs> very weird story. I don't know why he got hanged so quickly. It's almost comical. Uh, but there you go. That was a man by Kusunoki Shohei. All right, we've got two more stories. Uh, the next one on the left is called Debilitating Trip by Akiyama Shigenobu. So Akiyama, uh, Akiyama is a new mangaka for me that I've only dis discovered in the 1973 issues that I've been reading, and they're a bit hard to understand as well for me. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, you know, I don't read Japanese, so I'm translating a lot of these, and um, some stories I just won't fully understand, but you know, I still appreciate them for the artwork and I'll do my best to explain what's going on. But it just seems like this story here is focused on a man and you know his his life after work. He goes see some women, they do some stuff. Uh oh, let's go to that. Art style is interesting. Uh but yeah, I can't say exactly what's going on. I, I don't know why they're racing here. But um, yeah, that was a debilitating trip by Akiyama Shigenobu. Seemed like some salary man story, but there you go. All right, last one is called a Drunken Guest by uh, Suzuki Oji, also a, a quite a well-known um, Gekiga. Man well, not manga, Gekiga artist. Um, and this one seems to be either autobiographical or inspired by his own experiences. Because it's essentially just a story that recounts some drinking stories, uh, drinking experiences he's had, whether it's Suzuki himself or it's just based on Suzuki. Because uh, Shinichi Abe also appears here. So it's like talking about how, uh, like, a, a time that both Suzuki and Abe went out drinking. Uh, and, you know, it's just recounting that, oh, there's some just crazy shit happening around them. They drink to, to escape. You know, everyone's just dead drunk in the street. Uh, people are vomiting. They're being transported to ambulances because they drank too much. But I really love the atmosphere and like the amount of detail we have in the backgrounds. Very dark, fits the overall tone of the story. You know, recounting drinking experiences, getting uh, like encountering the wrong people while they're drunk, getting beat up, that sort of thing. And yeah, there's, that's basically the story there. Just a bunch of different experiences going about. Him describing some of the setting, um, the, the tone, the weather, stuff like that. But yeah, I love Suzuki's art style so much. It's very dark and moody. I think moody is a good word to describe it. In a good way, like a positive sort of thing. His, his stories do, the, the atmosphere of his stories are very strong. Yeah, that's signed there. It was not signed, uh, dated, made in 1972. And that was the end of the Gara issue. Got some essays back here, which I'll flip through. 
and some other stuff more Hayashi advertisements Sugo Yoshihoto advertisements but there you go yeah so it has been a while since I have done like a, a single issue Garo flip through uh, I did that video a while back where I just did first impressions of a couple of King Terry issues but I, I haven't done like a comprehensive flip through for a while so I do want to make it like frequent because I do have a lot of Garo issues and um it's you know it's fun it's fun to talk about them see the variety of stories uh but yeah at least in this one this one was a pretty good one it's just that some of them i couldn't fully understand whether it was because of the dialogue or the complexity of the story or anything like that um but i tried my best in explaining um all of them so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this one i'll see you in the next video bye